Have you ever gone to run an action in Blue Prism and it gives you the error not connected? Well, in this video, we're going to talk about the scenarios under which this can happen and the ways to solve those scenarios. Hey everybody, I'm Dave and today we are going to look at the error not connected. The reason I call this the not connected error is that at the end of the exception detail, like you can see here on the screen, it always says not connected. It might say some different text at the beginning between internal and not connected. It might say AMI error occurred in wait start stage, blah, blah, blah. It might say something about cannot perform step one in read stage or navigate stage or whatever. It's going to be based upon which type of stage and what action and what object you're working with that will change the text that's right here. But in all of the cases, not connected will be at the end of the exception detail. There are four scenarios in which this not connected error can occur. The first scenario is simply that the app may not be open. If you try to run an action against an application that is not already open, typically you'll see the same error. It will say not connected and that might make you feel like the application is open already and then it's just not connected to it. But you'll get the same error whether the app is open or closed if you're not connected to it. The second scenario is that the app was launched by a different Blue Prism object from the one that is having the error right now. And this can happen when you're following Blue Prism best practices, which is to make a separate object for each screen in an application. It presents some unique difficulties related to being not connected to the application. The third scenario is a little bit weird and it's hard for me to describe, so just go with me here on this. It's that Blue Prism launches the application correctly, but then once the application has started up, Blue Prism connects to the wrong window or the wrong process associated with that application, kind of like Internet Explorer's child index zero and one, if you've ever run into that issue before, where if you connect to zero, then it works. If you connect to one, it doesn't work, kind of like that. An example of the third scenario is Adobe Acrobat Reader. You, know, you can try it for yourself. If you, if you try to launch it in the traditional way, Blue Prism typically won't attach to it correctly. It'll seem like it's working, but then when you go to spy an element, it will say error occurred during spy operation. The fourth scenario is also a little bit weird, like the third scenario. Some applications will launch under one process, but then spin up another process. And when I say process in this case, it's Windows processes, like you can see in Task Manager. Blue Prism will know about the first process, but then when we go to launch the application, the first process goes away and the second process spins up and Blue Prism has sort of lost track of that application. Let me mention that these are separate scenarios, but you you can really solve them all by doing sort of a standard practice, a sort of a standard design for handling objects. And we'll work through that here in the next few minutes, but I am going to talk about each scenario separately. Let's start by solving scenario one. I'm going to hit F11 so that I can step into this. It's going to step into an action to an object called Notepad++ settings, uh, the launch action. It's opened up Object Studio in front of Process Studio. You'll see here that there's a navigate stage I've called launch. I've dragged the root node from the application explorer over here, and then I've chosen launch in the actions. And then it will launch based upon application modeler or based upon the inputs you give it here. I'm going to step over that, and you'll see that it launched Notepad++, and it launched it relatively quickly. There may not be all of the elements loaded on the screen. Maybe it opens up multiple windows on the screen and this navigate stage lets the process flow continue after the first screen loads, but maybe you're waiting for other ones too. Whatever, there's a number of scenarios. So that's where I'm gonna suggest that you always have an intelligent wait right after the navigate launch right here. You should effectively never have a launch that's only start, launch, end. Take this intelligent wait stage and let's pull it back into here. I'll open it really quick so you can see what's inside. I have it looking for a button to exist. If this were a browser, I would be using parent document loaded in Internet Explorer at least. You can use check exists, but you'll wanna use check exists on an element that you think will take the longest to load. And then watch for that thing to appear. Make sure that you're using some global timeouts. Probably not a good idea to hard code it here like I did. Great idea to use environment variables. So always have this intelligent wait at the end here and you'll be good to go. And we'll step out of this. 
Okay, let's reset and run that one more time so we can see that it works. And you'll see there's a little bit of a delay there after the application is loaded. That's that intelligent wait kind of waiting to make sure that it can find the element. And now we can move on and now we can make the assumption that all the other actions can just start working with this application because it's fully loaded on the screen. Now let's solve scenario two. There are two ways to solve this. One, you can either change how you're calling the objects, change your design of your objects so that it's a single object that launches the application and then also works with it and does other things. You can put all of your actions in one object. I've seen dozens of actions in a single object and it works just fine, but best practice dictates that you would create one object per screen of an application. So if you are going forward with that design, you'll need to make sure that all of your objects that won't have a launch action in them have specifically an attach action. So let me show you that. Let's pretend like we are launching this with a different object and that's in fact what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna set next stage on this. It's calling a, another object that does the same thing that this one does. Step over it, you see it launched, notepad++. Let me just show you that this is gonna produce an error. I'll step in and this is gonna throw an error saying, hey, uh, we're not connected and that's because this is a, a different object than the one that loaded the application. Let's now go over to our attach page and make sure that that thing looks good. You may not have an attach page like this. If you don't, then you'll want to create it again in every single object that doesn't have a launch or won't handle launching. You'll want three stages on this in the read stage, drag the root node over here under data, choose is connected and output to a flag data item, create a decision stage and put that flag data item that you created and that my case is connected, put that into the expression field, and then that will resolve to true or false. If it's true, it'll go on the yes path to end, because if we're connected, we don't need to connect. If the result is false from checking whether or not you're connected, then you'll wanna to try to attach to the application using a navigate stage, I've called it attach. Again, drag the root node over, and then choose attach under the actions list. I'll leave you to decide how you're gonna handle attaching to the application, what I'll mention is that you just wanna make sure that this matches what it is an application model or however you designed that. Also account for if you have different environments for your application. So now let's go back over to the action that we started with since now we've verified or we've set up our attach page. It's not published right now. And what we'll do is move this start stage up and we're gonna do this every, every single page. Delete the link from the start stage and then let's drag a subpage reference over here. Keep the first option checked, choose attach and finish. Now let's link this in and let's make sure it works. Set next stage. I'm going to step into this. You'll see it gets connected. Um, no, it's not connected. So attach it worked and we'll step out. Now we are attached to the application even though we're in that new object, the one that didn't launch it. And I'm gonna step through this, this wait stage and it worked. This is the one that threw the error before, so we're good now and the rest of the action should work. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just briefly show you what I would do for all the other actions. Copy this subpage reference and go to all these other actions and drop that here too. So that any of these actions that need to run, it doesn't matter what order you run them in, as long as the screen is in the state you'd expect it to be in, you'll put this at the beginning of every single one of them so that it always is verifying whether or not it's on, it's connected to the application. For example, here we're already connected. So if I were to run from here, it would say get is connected, true, is connected, yes, and then move to the end and it would keep going. Now let's look at scenario three and how to solve that. Let me mention that this is gonna be dependent upon your having already looked at scenario two and implemented what was suggested there as far as setting up an attach page and then putting a sub page reference to that attach page or action at the beginning of each of your other actions. That will be necessary here. So I have set up an object to reproduce scenario three and that is the best example I have is Adobe Acrobat Reader where you open it up and it seems like Blue Prism kind of attaches to the wrong thing even though it appears to attach correctly. So what I'm gonna do is click launch and it's gonna launch the executable here and load a PDF. Click launch, you see it loaded and it also appears to have attached correctly. But if I go to select an element, click identify 
and I, it seems like it's spying, right? But if I hold control, click, it says there was an error during the spying operation. Usually this means that you're attached to the wrong thing. And I say thing because I don't know if I should say it's a window or a different process ID or whatever. In this case, I believe the problem is here in task manager. You can see that there are two process IDs, two separate processes associated with Acrobat Reader. And I'm guessing Blue Prism is just attaching to one of them and not the other. I don't know that I really expect Blue Prism to have handled this for every random application out there. So when you come across one that kind of has this setup and Blue Prism isn't attaching to the right one, it seems like you just have to attach in a different way, which we'll look at that in just a second here. We're back in the process now and you'll see that it's actually a little bit different from what scenario one and two looked like. We used this for scenario one, this for scenario two. We're gonna be using this stage over here for scenario three and I've added a stage just below that. So I'm actually gonna show you the example still with Notepad++, but the same concept still applies for Acrobat Reader. And it, what we're using is the utility environment VBO, which Blue Prism provides, uh, and the action start process. You'll provide to application, that input, you provide the executable path for whatever your application is. For Adobe Acrobat Reader, you would be uh, passing the path to the Acrobat Reader executable, and then in arguments, you'd put the path to the file that you want it to open when you first open Acrobat Reader. So I'm gonna start the run from right here. I've set next stage. I am going to step into this just so you see what it's doing. It's gonna open the utility environment VBO. It's gonna run a code stage that starts Notepad++. And this is gonna be different because now we don't have any uh, navigate stage or anything. We're not attaching to the application. So that has not happened yet. The other piece of this is that if this application takes a while to load, this stage, this start process, is not gonna wait for that application to finish loading before it gives you the process flow back. So it could just keep going and we could try something too fast effectively. So what we'll do is use this action, same VBO, utility environment VBO, wait for process window. We know the name of the process, Notepad++, and we know the window title, Notepad++ with um, an asterisk. It's already open here, but you'll see that it had a max wait of 60 seconds. So as long as it doesn't wait 60 seconds, then we'll know that it has found the process, Notepad++, and then the window title that has Notepad++ in it. So I'm gonna step over this. This does the same thing that a wait stage, eh, almost the same thing that a wait stage does before you, you know, after you tried to launch the application in your launch page, like we talked about in scenario one. We are still not attached to the application. So I'm gonna step in and show you that what we did in scenario two solves this problem as well. So at this point, we are not attached to the application. You can see that because it says launch up here. So I'm gonna step into the attach page and it says get is connected and it's false. So it's gonna go over attached to the application that is open over here and then keep going. And now this um, stage right here, this wait stage would have failed if we weren't attached correctly. And that's scenario three. Now let's briefly talk about scenario four. Scenario four is basically the same as scenario three, except that you do have an extra option. I don't have a good way to show you this happening because right now I don't have access to some applications I know of that cause this issue. But when you come across an application where Blue Prism tries to launch, say using the launch action, and it'll, it'll launch and then immediately it seems like it gets disconnected or detached. That's a situation where you wanna still perform a similar kind of thing that you do in scenario three. You have the option of using start process on that application and then it's a good idea to use wait for process window, both in the utility environment VBO. And then you do your normal thing where you have each object's action calls uh, the attach page just to verify that it's attached to the application. If it's not, then it will attach. The reason this is separated from scenario three is that you have another option too. Because you know that the object will sometimes, it kind of gets connected and then it gets disconnected, you do kind of have the option of just using the regular launch navigate. But in that scenario, you want to be very sure that uh, whenever you run any other actions, that they all have this at the beginning of them with an attach subpage reference right at the beginning before it does anything else. But if you want to be really sure about it in those kind of scenarios, I would go with 
start process like scenario three we walked through wait for process window and then the rest of the actions after that thanks everybody for watching please like and subscribe if you like these videos and you want to see more if you subscribe and check the notification bell then you'll get notifications of videos as i release them thanks and have a great day